please enter the beautiful and elegant Palace of Versailles, the epicenter of royal French etiquette in the 17th and 18th centuries. Imagine walking through these grand halls and witnessing the most powerful people of the time showcasing their wealth and status through intricate social rituals and rules. Etiquette was not just a way of life. It was a way to maintain order and power in a society where every move was scrutinized. But let's be real, some of these rules were downright bizarre. How bizarre, you ask? Well, let's say that peeing directly in front of queens was, at one point, considered acceptable. Yes, you heard that right. So buckle up, grab your popcorn, and prepare for a magnificent tour through the fascinating world of royal French etiquette. Before we dive into the main content of the video, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Now, let's get started. The importance of etiquette at Versailles. Why would anyone bother with such an elaborate system of etiquette? Well, in Versailles, etiquette was everything. It was the foundation that upheld social order and demonstrated power and wealth. To be someone at Versailles, you had to know the rules and play the game. One of the most important rules was greeting the king and queen. You had to follow specific protocols, including bowing, curtsying, and never turning your back on the monarchs. In fact, walking backward was an accepted way of showing respect. If you messed up, well, let's say it wouldn't be pretty. Mealtimes were another area where etiquette reigned supreme. Forks, knives, and spoons were placed in precise positions, and using the wrong utensil was considered a grave offense. Heaven forbid you accidentally drop a piece of bread on the floor. It was said that even the rats in Versailles wouldn't touch it. Of course, dressing the part was also essential. From elaborate wigs to extravagant gowns, everything had to be just right. One French queen, Marie Antoinette, was known for wearing towering hairstyles that could reach over three feet tall. But let's not forget the funny side of it all. Did you know that farting was considered a sign of good health and wealth at Versailles? That's right, the louder, the better. And if you had the privilege of using the royal chamber pot, you were living the dream of every courtier. So, if you ever find yourself in Versailles, make sure to eat your beans and show off your flatulence. In Versailles, women were crucial in maintaining the strict social order. The queen was expected to embody grace and elegance, and her ladies-in-waiting assisted her in every aspect of her life. Women were expected to behave in a certain way in both public and private settings. They always had to be calm, collected, and poised, never showing emotions or speaking out of turn. Even a simple gesture like a yawn could be seen as a sign of disrespect toward the queen. There are stories of one queen's ladies-in-waiting using an elaborate system of hand signals to communicate gossip and juicy details about their fellow courtiers. Rumor has it that one lady-in-waiting was so devoted to her queen that she slept on a mat outside her bedroom door, just in case she was needed in the middle of the night. Of course, the queen herself was not exempt from the rules of etiquette. Her every move was closely monitored and scrutinized. One queen, Marie Therese, was known for never removing her gloves in public, even while eating. If a lady-in-waiting accidentally spilled something on the queen's gown, it was said that the offender would be punished by having to wash the entire garment with her own hands. For instance, did you know that the queen's toilet was a highly coveted event? Women would compete for the honor of attending, and if you were lucky enough to be chosen, you could gain significant social status. Overall, women played a crucial role in the intricate social system of Versailles, both as representatives of their families and as key players in the court's political machinations. Regarding matters of the heart in Versailles, there were strict rules to follow. 
courtship was a delicate dance, with potential suitors navigating a complex web of social expectations and family obligations. For starters, there were rules around dating. Young ladies and gentlemen were expected to adhere to a strict code of conduct when interacting with one another. For example, it was considered improper for a gentleman to approach a lady directly without first being introduced by a mutual acquaintance. Once a couple had been properly introduced, there were still rules. Physical contact was frowned upon, with couples expected to keep a respectable distance from one another. If a gentleman wanted to express his interest in a lady, he had to do so subtly and indirectly, often through flowers or small gifts. Marriage was the ultimate goal of courtship in Versailles. However, choosing a spouse went beyond love and attraction. Families often used their children's marriages to cement political alliances, secure financial gain, or improve social standing. As a result, the choice of a spouse was often left up to the parents or other family members rather than the couple themselves. Even after a match had been made, there were still rules to follow. The bride and groom were expected to exchange formal vows in a public ceremony with witnesses present to ensure the union was legally binding. But what about affairs? Despite the strict rules around marriage and courtship, extramarital affairs were not uncommon in Versailles. They were often seen as a way to assert dominance and display one's power or sense of self-love and pride. In this environment, even the language of love was highly codified. Love letters were often written in secret code, with lovers using symbols and references to convey their true feelings without arousing suspicion. And if you wanted to break up with someone in this high society, you couldn't just ghost them. You had to write a formal rejection letter, citing a plausible excuse for ending the relationship. There are stories of famous courtesans, like Madame de Pompadour, who used their wit and charm to capture the heart of King Louis XV. In Versailles, clothing was more than just a way to cover your body. It was a way to display your wealth, status, and taste. Clothing was a form of art, and the most elaborate and luxurious outfits were reserved for the highest members of the court. Fashion trends in Versailles constantly changed, and the nobles always looked for new and innovative ways to show off their style. Women's fashion was particularly elaborate, with ornate dresses, huge wigs, and high shoes. The dresses were made from expensive fabrics such as silk and satin, and were often embellished with lace, ribbons, and jewels. Men's fashion was also very elaborate, focusing on the coat and waistcoat. These garments were often made from luxurious fabrics like silk or velvet, and were decorated with embroidery, lace, or metal buttons. The waistcoat worn underneath was often even more ornate than the coat itself. Strict dress codes and fashion etiquette in Versailles were taken very seriously. The rules varied depending on the occasion, and there were strict guidelines for what to wear at different events. For example, men were expected to wear a coat, waistcoat, breeches, stockings, and a wig at formal court events, while women were expected to wear an elaborate dress and towering hair. Fashion and clothing played an enormous role in the social world of Versailles. Clothing was not only a form of art, but also a means of communication. Even in this highly formal setting, there were hilarious moments to be found. So, there you have it. The wild world of royal French etiquette at Versailles. We've learned that manners were everything, whether it was peeing in front of the queen or wearing the right shoes.